greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Hey! Greater is coming. Are you ready? Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Hey! Greater is coming. Are you ready? Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Hey! Greater is coming. Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater, greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. 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 Are you ready? Greater is coming. Greater is coming. Greater is
and our beautiful director, uh, Joshua Nelson. And let's not forget our Reverend Alan Dr. Potts, who will be giving us the message today. So why not call a friend to tell him to dial in and to join us this morning? And we are going to have a glorious time. So let us always remember to always keep God first in your life. Always. Thank you. To God be the glory. Good morning, Raina, and happy third Sunday in July. Here are your morning's announcements. We invite you to join our prayer conference line ministry led by our own sister Carol Hamilton, Monday through Friday from 7 to 8 o'clock a.m. during our morning meditation and time of corporate prayer. Join us as we are excited to have you dial in and fellowship through scripture readings, songs, and prayer. It is a great way to start your day. On Wednesdays at 11 o'clock a.m., we have our conference line Bible study. Please join in as many of our members enjoy learning about the Word of God together. And then we invite you to our Zoom Bible study, Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. This awesome virtual experience of getting more acquainted with the Word through um, hands-on Bible teachings is just another way to grow in Christ. So please join in on our time of study. Hallelujah and thank you God. On Tuesday, July 21st, the GABC officers will be distributing food boxes. You will be able to pick up food boxes between the hours of 11 and 12 o'clock p.m. right here at the church. We wish to thank the feeding ministry for their unselfish efforts and making sure our community receives food for all families who are in need. On the fourth Saturday, on July 25th, the ministry will distribute hot meals from 11 o'clock until 1 o'clock p.m. Please come out, pick up a meal, and deliver one, of, one to one of our members who may not be able to make it out. Let's be a blessing. We extend condolences to Sister Monique Mitchell and family on the loss of her cousin, Dante Gardner. Funeral arrangements are incomplete at this time, but please remember to lift their entire family up in, in prayer. GABC extends a hearty congratulations to all class of 2020 graduates. We wish you luck in your future endeavors. Praise God for such a great accomplishment. On Sunday, August the 2nd, we invite all of you, our members, to join us for our first Sunday services and partake of communion in our parking lot. Yes, we will begin at 9.30 a.m. sharp. Take note that we will be following social distancing and COVID-19 guidelines. Temperatures will be taken. Masks must be worn to enter the parking lot. If you would like, you can bring your own lounge chairs to sit in. Please bring an umbrella or wear a hat to shield yourself from the sun. Dress in comfortable summer attire as we look forward to enjoying our first live service this March. Thanking God for this anticipated time of sharing, amen. Now we extend happy birthday to our July members and friends. So let me just read off for the remainder of this month. We have our own sister evangelist Denise Richards, praise God, who is celebrating a birthday on the 17th. Kyla Hunter, we say happy birthday to Stephanie McKinney, to Andrew Wyatt, to Raj Kearney, Mildred Staggers, Jamira Spotwood, Charity Baxter, and our own deaconess, Katonia Page Hammond. Happy birthday, and may God continue to bless you all. You are cordially invited to fellowship with Pastor Pies and the Greater Abyssinia family on this Sunday evening, July 19th at 6 o'clock p.m. This virtual church conference will allow all members and friends to log on or call in to our Zoom virtual line. You should have received a call from one of our ministry leaders with the phone number and access code. So please dial in and allow the Spirit of the Lord to bless your soul. 
I have enjoyed being before you again. Thank you so much, Greater. God bless and remember, I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. Tell everyone that you know their lives matter because Jesus says so. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory.
We thank you, oh God, for the many sacrifices that you made for us, oh God. So much, oh God, that we have freedom to live. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for the house you provide for us, Father God. We thank you, oh God, for the cars we drive. We thank you, oh God, for the clothes that you put on our backs, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for the food that you put in our bellies, Lord. Father God, we can't thank you enough, Father God. For the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Father God. We thank you. We lift you up, oh God. Oh, Father God, we glorify you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We love you. We cherish you. Oh, Father God, we just love you. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you look over the city of Shannon, Father God. Go into the hospitals, oh God. Go into the nursing homes, Lord. Go into the rehabilitation centers, oh God. Oh, Father God, let them know that you're there for them, Father God. Let them know, oh God, that you're still on the battlefield, Father God. You can do all things but fail, Lord. Oh, Father God, walk around their bedsides, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Touch their bodies, Father God. Touch them the best way you know how, Father God. Oh, Father God, we love you. We magnify you, Father God. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you keep us all and we shall be kept. Bless us and we shall be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I can't get my uh, thing going, but hey, you if you, you can't hear me, but I know you can see me. There you go. We finally got it. There you go. There you go. Praise God. We want to go back to this slide of, of giving to God our tithes and our offerings. We know that you will be a blessing uh, to the Lord and um, in giving of your gifts. We want to thank you. We want to thank you for how faithful you are in still providing to the church your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, your blessings unto the Lord. We want to thank you. Thank you. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name on today, Father God. Thank you for those who gave and those who could not give on today. We bless you, continually bless you. Lord God, today is a wonderful day. Thank you for keeping me through all my trials and tribulations. I love you, Lord. I love you with all my heart and soul. Again, Father God, we bless your name. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they fall, but you will never fail me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Hallelujah. Your promise is 
that part is meditative word right now. Mm -hmm. We ask God that you would give us the centering moment that would love you and keep you. Your people ever in your graces. Mm -hmm. Give us that centering moment that makes preaching easy and living right. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give our praise to you. A round of applause for a wonderful, wonderful. Come on, right in your chat box. Just give my thumbs up. Come on, just, just say praise. some time to be able to come and share this word on this morning. We have been doing this for almost three months and four months now. And it's been a great joy and a privilege just to bring the word of God to you remotely and to share in this platform. Today's word comes from Matthew 28, verse number 20, where it says, And Jesus is teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always even to the very end of the age. I want to tag this text of the spirits to God from just this simple thought here. What's that? During my devotional time this week, I was reading the hymn, Amazing Grace. What a wonderful hymn that was, penned by Sir John Newton. But let's be clear, although he wrote this wonderful life-changing hymn, it was written because he was in a dramatic, life-changing event. John Newton was like Paul, the persecutor of the faith. In a raging storm one night on a ship called the Greyhound, he felt the storm uh, was God's doing because of his wickedness. It was the same moment as it was with Jonah. Do you remember Jonah being in the boat? And Jonah was thrown overboard because they thought it was him who had sinned against God that was causing this great uh, 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 storm to come in. But yet, here it is, we come to see that Newton realized that on that night, he had to surrender to the will of God and become a great figure in the life of the faith. Someone said about him that John Newton was uh, evangelical, but he was the evangelical of the worst kind. Reason why? Because he was a fanatic. He denounced all self-indulgence and pleasures that society loved the most. And reflecting upon his experience, he wrote the most moving line of a hymn that triggered, get this, that triggered and warranted my attention. The hymn goes something like this. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. I always thought that fear was something that we should run away from, but according to but according to this verse, it's, it's something that can be life-changing. The other day, I was reading an article and it said something um, that caught my attention to the reality of life. It said something like this. It said, fear may be filled, may be filling the world today, but it does not have to fill your heart. Let me say that again. It said, fear may be Filling the world today, but it does not have to fill your heart. People can become, people can become so filled with so much fear that they just don't understand what it is that God is doing and what God is saying uh, in the midst of all that we're going through. Fear can become so debilitating that it leaves us in the quagmire of our own situation. But I want to come and encourage you on today to let you know that even in the midst of it, that fear may fill your fill the, the world today, but it doesn't have to fill your heart. The Bible tells us that God's people should not be a fearful people. Yeah, we should not be a people of fear. But when you look at the Bible, you'll come to see 365 times in Scripture. 365 times you count it. God tells us. Do not be afraid or fear not. 365 times. That's one time for every day of the year. So when you wake up in the morning, it ought to be your mandate to say, I will not fear. I will face life in its fullness, and I will face it with joy. I will not fear. And I believe God created fear this way because he realized that each day, goodness, each day seems to bring with it a fresh reason for fear. Uh-huh. 
This is why we need to have a fear not in our arsenal of faith. Just look around and witness why fear seems to be so prevalent today. Just look around you. Layoffs on the rise, slowdowns in the economy, health scares, division and schism, oversized and rule, quiet as is kept. Fear urges us into prison of our anxiety and ancient mind and keep us from the freedom that Christ offers us. We talked about that this week in Bible study, that whomsoever the Son of Man set free, he is free indeed. That's right. And Psalm 118 and 6 tells us why we should not fear. The Lord is with us. I will not be afraid. What can man do unto me? If God is with you, what is there to be afraid of? Get this. Now, because this is true, many of us, have gotten the mistaken impression that God doesn't endorse fear. He doesn't endorse it. But get this, that God would never want us to be afraid of anything, but that's not true. Get this, he places a little fear in us uh -huh, so that we can acknowledge who's in charge and that we can't do it by ourselves and that we don't know it all. Look, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 9, in verse number 10, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what wisdom. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 13, fear God and keep his commandment, but this is the what? The whole duty of man. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 28, as Jesus taught, don't be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one. Yeah, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So we come to see through these scriptures that God created fear so that it can help us to come to understand who's in charge and who can deliver us. Fear is a part of our makeup. You can't get around it. You can't get under it. It doesn't have to be what's the dominant nature in our existence, though. It's part of our makeup. But it doesn't have to be a dominant part of our existence. And my word to us today is with all that is going on around us, let us turn to faith and not fear. We have become accustomed to the default of fear in our lives, but we need to switch the faith as our default reaction to the threats of life. Let, let's help each other realize that in order to overcome the overload of anxious paranoia in the world, is that is admitting to us we might just turn to the source of our faith for the solution and that is Jesus Christ. My faith look up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. You know what allows fear to rise in our lives here? This is what allows fear to rise in our lives and I've come to understand this in my own life. Focusing on insignificant things or significant things. Let me say that again. Focusing on insignificant things over things that are of importance. Mm -hmm. We need to find freedom from the fear of insignificance. That's the first point of our, of our discussion right now. We need to find freedom from fear of, of insignificant. Perhaps this is what the Apostle Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 7. When he wrote, whatever deem I have. I count as loss for the sake of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He had learned the significance of his insignificance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can type that in that chat box. Significance of the insignificant. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this is what John the Baptist was also saying in John chapter 3, verse number 30, when he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Both Paul and John had learned the significance of being insignificant in the ministry of God's kingdom for his glory. Listen, let me tell you this. If you're free, stay free. God has set you free and why go back into bondage when you have been made free? Second, take control that the Lord will never leave your side. For God declared in his word in Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 5, he says this, I will never leave you or forsake you. God has promised us as followers of Jesus Christ that he will be with us. That's just what his name is, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, with us God. God is with us. 
heal me of the leaf of snow for sake of the Bible says, where can I go from your presence or where can I make my bed in hell? You are there, my make my bed in heaven. Behold, you are there also, which lets us know God will always be with us. As one old time used to say, and I hear it so ringing, ringing in my mind right now. He says that God is closer than close and nearer than near, which means he says, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Finally, get this. If we're going to look at fear and say, what is it? Watch this. You got to unleash your words and become filled with peace. Mm. Unleash your words and become filled with peace. We can trust God for everything we need in this life. That's why he comes on and tells us that he will supply all of our needs. What? According to his riches and glory, we can depend on him in every situation and know that he knows what's good for us even when we can't see. We don't have to worry about anything. Why? Because God is with us. This is what Jesus was trying to explain to the disciples in, in, in Luke chapter 12. And, and, and when he says here, and he says to the disciples, therefore I tell you, therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will put on. A life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Jesus is saying that we shouldn't have to worry about the things in this life that we worry about in the scope of things. As children of God, the thing we tend to worry about doesn't matter as much as we think it does. Mm -hmm. The good news is that God unleashes us from worry so we can live the new life in the kingdom of God. What is this kingdom of God? This is what we found out on Wednesday night in our Bible study time of sharing. It's freedom. Because Jesus died and rose from the dead, we have been made free. God remembers us because of what his son has done. God the Father, he is bigger than all the things that, that is wrong in the world and in life. God will keep you as he has kept us thus far. If it's, there's freedom from worry about how your life will end, then know this. God already knows the end. Yes, he does. He knows the end. And because he knows the end, you shouldn't have to worry. He sent his son to die for you. To not only die for you, but to raise and to be risen at the end with new life. Today, learn to trust in the Lord. And fear less. In my files, in my files, I, um, I came across a story about this man who was attending a Bible college. And in continuing a Bible college, he was sharing how in that day that he was, um, had to take a test. And in the last minute, everyone in class was studying. The teacher came in and said he would review with them for just a few moments before the test started. And he went through the review. And and most of the stuff they were reviewing was in the study guide, and most was in the in the book, but most of them wasn't even familiar with it. And the teacher would question the teacher why are we going over some of these things. And the teacher said to them, You're required to know everything in the book. So they really couldn't argue with the professor and, 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 and as it relates to what he said. And so finally it was time to take the test. If this time to take the test, the professor instructed them, leave the test face down on the desk until everyone has it, and I'll tell you when you can begin. And when he began, when he took the test and began the test, he realized that all of the answers were filled in on the test. And on the bottom of the page, on the bottom of the page, it said this, this is the end of the final exam. All the answers on the test are correct, and all of you will receive an A on the final exam. The reason you passed the test, the professor said, is because the creator of the test took the test for you. Hallelujah. And I just came to tell somebody today that God has already taken the test. And he's already given us the answer. And all we have to do is trust him 
and never die. Why? Because he's walking with us. He's talking with us. And he's telling us that we are his own. What you're experiencing now is only a test. And the creator has you in the midst of it all. But he's giving you the answer. God is crazy about you. He died to prove it to you. Give him your words. Trust in him. Provide for him. And guess what? He will unleash your words and give you a new life. I'm not telling you something I read, but I'm telling you something I know. Fear, what's that? When you have a God who is so big that he has everything in control. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than me. We thank you for this word. And we pray that there may be someone who's yet to receive Jesus being your personal Savior. We just call upon this simple gospel that God spoke on the world, that whoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. You believe that simple story right where you sit, right where you stand, you can be saved. Give God your hand and give him your heart. And come be a part of the Bible teaching, Bible teaching. And receive your newfound salvation. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Kid, my ear was wrong. Long as I live in trouble, ride. Guess what? I'm going to hasten to his throne. Come on, let's pray together and get to God so you can see this message. Father, we thank you now for those who have heard this message. We're praying right now, God, with outstretched hands that you will touch my brother, touch my sister. Let them know that fear does not have the ability to of them, but yet they can rise above it and walk in faith. Keep them now as I pray. Hold them in Jesus' name. And in the days to come, we'll come out of this knowing that we have victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God and thank you, Jesus. Come on, type down in there. Thank you, Jesus. Type in that chat box. Thank you, Jesus. Type in there. Fear cannot hold me down. Why? Because I am victorious in Jesus. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayer. Amen. Yeah. Hey.